Hey, how's it going? So today we're gonna work on two different things. First off, we're going to be installing this power distribution slash power converter box on my daily driver F3. This is the one that Wheelchair Ghost sent me. But before that, we're going to check on this, I think it's a 2023 M3. This chair right here that I recently got, last night I realized that this chair does not have a light kit on it and that'll give us some useful information. One thing I do not know is on the newer Permobile chairs, if you're trying to install lights on them, if the ICS module comes with the extra internal daughter board that controls the animated lights that the newer chairs have. And this is what I'm talking about here. The newer chairs have sort of a, an animation when it comes to the turn signals and brake lights and stuff like that. You can see how they fade on and off and then the turn signals sweep middle to outside. And the reason this is useful information is if you get a chair without a light kit, it makes a difference as to how you can install your own lights using the chair's built-in lighting control functionality. So I'm gonna hop onto the floor, we're gonna take a look real quick and see if that board is in fact in there or not. It is an extra part that obviously costs them extra money, I just don't know if the chair doesn't come with a factory light kit if that's installed in there. So let's find out. Now this chair does not have a seat lift on it, but that's not going to really be too much of a problem to get the front cover off this thing. So we're gonna tilt this back a little ways. Go here into mode and then seating. And we'll change that to tilt. We'll run this back a little ways. There we go, that should be good. And we're gonna turn it back off. And because this chair has manual leg rests, we can just pull these out of the way. Just basically pull this little knob here and then we can flex these up and out. You can see there's a few different holes here and that pin just drops into each one. Now we can remove these two thumb screws here and we basically just need to get this front cover off. And the ICS module should be mounted vertically in there. Oh, gotta watch the grease. There we go, two thumb screws. This should just lift right off of here. There we go. Then we're going to carefully fold this down and we can pop this out of its bracket. And now we can remove the cover and have a look inside. Ah, so confirmed. We, uh, here, let me unplug these. So even though this chair did not come with a factory light kit, it still has this little daughter board in here to control the LED animations and whatnot. So, that means what I need to do is update my guides on the website. Actually, probably need to get some pictures of this also. But I'm gonna update my guides on the website and show how to remove this little extra lighting control board here. And then you can use the existing outputs like these used to have before they started uh, shipping the chairs with the animated LED lights. By the way, this here is what I was talking about in the last video about the echo chamber, as it were, for the brakes. The brake housings in the end of the motors are down inside this big piece of plastic. And this winds up making sort of a giant chamber that's open on the bottom, and it amplifies the sound of the brakes clicking. So that's why on the M3s the brakes are so much louder. Oh, and I just realized we do in fact have the Permobile branded um, Volt Pro batteries. Cool. I'll be covering this in a later video, and actually I showed this as well in the original 2021 F3 teardown video. But basically there's a couple of little Torx screws here, and this board is powered by the center pin header for the lights there, and this thing just lifts right out of there. But uh, yeah, you can see there's a rubber plug right here, and nothing hooked up to it, which means this chair does not have the connect module either there would be a couple of wires coming down this track over here, and one of them would plug into one of the open RNET plugs, and the other would plug through this cover right here into this mm, sort of a serial, serial pin header right there for communication. So, um, good to know, we learned a couple of things. And just for reference, all of these connectors here, the RNET and the ICS seating actuator connectors, it doesn't matter what port they plug into or what order they go into. Everything auto detects and works regardless of what port. So, I mean, it never hurts to, you know, take a photo of everything before you take stuff apart. 
but you just have to be careful with this little mechanism that folds here since there's a bunch of wires, but it's not really a big deal at all which one of those ports all the wires plug back into. Just make sure they all get plugged back in. By the way, the video clip that I posted a couple of days ago about the charging port on the back of this M3, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but a bunch of people watched that, I think, and completely missed the point of it. Um, the idea was that we're trying to get right to repair past and we need to have more competition with different providers and dealers and things like that. It wasn't a nitpick over a small adjustment that could be done easily, obviously, not a big deal, but not everybody has the ability or the help or the tools to do things like that. And not being able to charge the chair, I think would be one of the fundamental things that should be possible when a chair is delivered. Now, as you can see, this chair has a lot of specialized seating and specialized controls on it. One could argue that the person that this chair was intended for would not be able to make that adjustment on their own. So that was the whole idea there was to basically illustrate that there needs to be more more competition and more options for people to get their chair fixed. It's not a complaint about a brand new chair. So I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, here we have my F3. This is my daily. I cleaned this thing about eight hours ago, but you know, it's already got a bunch of dust and dirt on it. That's kind of what happens. But what we're gonna do is mount this here control box. I'm gonna open this up in a second and I'll show you what's going on inside here, but it's a power converter, it's a USB charger, has some outputs and other things like that. I was looking around the chair trying to figure out a good spot to mount this because it's designed, if you see these, uh, the four screws on the bottom corners there, those are spaced to attach to a permobile rail. On the other side of the chair, I have my phone and some other stuff. This side, I have a little pouch that just has my keys and some other stuff in it and got a little audio recorder mounted right here. But I think the best spot for this is actually going to be right here. It should tuck up nicely and be kind of out of the way. So what we're gonna do is take off this side guard here and we're gonna flip the hardware around so that this mounting point is up here. And then that will give us enough space for this thing to just fit between that mount and this little pouch that I have here. So we'll just swing this out of the way, pop our mount off of here. And I've just got a little like, Sony audio recorder in a uh, and actually a mag pouch here and it comes in handy for a lot of things but basically just one of these little IC recorders and it mounts on the side of my chair out of the way in case I need to record something. So to flip this hardware around I, I put these old school uh, Permobile padded covers on here because the new ones are starting to fall apart. We're just going to open this up then loosen and loosen this screw here. Then essentially we can just flip this around so that this will mount to the chair further forward. Then we're gonna loosen up our track bolts here. And you can slide this all the way up. And with this thing flipped around the other way, we can put this back in. Actually, I think it's perfect just like that. I was envisioning we were gonna have to change some of these mounts and slide things back and forth, but it's lined up with the one on the other side just like it is. So yeah, I think that was fairly easy. All this bracket here is a little bit wide. We may have to move this, but let's see here. Yeah, so for that to clear, we're gonna have to move this pouch back just a little bit, which actually also, this is our USB charger over here. This thing is what's currently powering our camera system that's on the chair. We uh, installed that a few videos ago. Link to that up above and down below if you haven't seen it, but basically just a little motorcycle DVR camera. There's one here and there's another one on the back of the chair and it just loop records all the time. The other plan with this power box is I'm going to use this to run power to the camera system. Right now it's simply powered by the Permobile USB charger and whenever the chair is on, the cameras are on and when the chair is off, the cameras are off. I would like to be able to turn that on and off independent of the power of the chair because I don't need it recording all the time. 
And there are some times when the chair is off that it might be handy to have it recording. So we're probably gonna move some of that. Oh, and the other thing, I almost forgot, we have some rock lights. We're also getting these installed in the chair. There's four of these in the kit. So we're finally getting some accessories for this thing. Let's go ahead and pull this thing off of here. So it's just something I stuck on here right after I got the chair and I never really thought much about it. I've got a couple other bags. We might try putting one of those on instead, but it just goes around the seat rail and through the hole that's right there. Yeah. Yeah, this power cable's getting getting pretty smashed right there. Once again, the way I was powering the cameras with this was kind of a temporary solution. And here we have a very nicely laid out power module. This is a 24 to 12 volt converter. We've got some bus bars down here for connections. We have a USB charging output, and this has a voltmeter built into the middle there, full power button. We have another switch here that we can use for something. This one is currently wired to turn the converter on and off. And this one is another accessory switch that's currently not used. And then we have a whole bunch of wire for inputs and outputs and things like that. But these four screws that we have down here on the bottom are exactly the right size to attach this to the rail. So let me loosen these up here a little bit. And we can slide this, actually move the chair here a little. There we go. Can slide these onto our rail. There we go. And like so, add our plastic piece back in here. Pull that forward as far as it's going to go and we can tighten these down so it doesn't move but we need the right sized tool for that and just to make sure everything's going to fit properly we will reinstall this there we go and slide this back up here and it looks like we're gonna have just enough clearance here. This little cap, I think, yeah, that little cap will still open. It is really close to this, but I might just bump this back a tiny bit. There we go. Just to make sure there's clearance to get a USB cable in there without hitting this. All right, cool. Uh, I may still adjust the position of this a little bit, but for now, I'm just gonna tighten down some of these bolts because it's going to affect the tilt of it as I do that. Actually, yeah, we're gonna bump this back a little bit further. There we go. Yeah, so this is pushing right up against the cushion, which was flexing it out a little bit. But now that we have these tight, we can see that it's solidly mounted on there. We still have clearance for our USB plugs right here, and we can access both of these switches. And this thing does not stick out wider than the tire. In fact, it's actually inset a little bit from the armrest. So I think this thing's gonna be a good size. By the way, a bit of a life hack. If you don't want it to look like you're carrying around a bunch of stuff that somebody might wanna steal, just get one of these boxes that has something about Pampers on it. And um, yeah, not that you should be leaving tools in your car when it's parked, but this certainly doesn't scream uh, fluorescent green stuff that might be worth something to sell to convert to things that get shoved up your nose. <laughs> okay, now's the part where I have to figure out some of the wiring and inputs and outputs and decide how I want to connect this up. This powers the box and also has some outputs on there. So I'm gonna raise the seat lift up. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to power it directly from the batteries. That would be the preferable way to do it, but I don't know, we'll see. I might pull power from the Arnett bus. I've gotta look around in here and see the best way to route everything. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll be back. Yeah, something about if it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. I've decided to go ahead and connect this thing directly to the batteries, which means I'm gonna have to snake this super long cable all the way down to the base. So what I did was pull part of the seat pan off. I took off this side, but not that side. My camera recording unit is attached back here and the cables are kind of tight. So I was able to lift this up just enough 
and get our main power cable pulled through underneath here. It's gonna be hard to see. There's a bunch of other cables right here that run underneath some clamps and basically go across the chair like this and pop out down here on this side. So this is our main power feed and this runs down sort of a cable raceway into the base of the chair. So I think that should be good and gonna put the seat pattern back on and then we will basically zip tie this wire here down along all the rest of this that goes down into the power base. I've done this before on another one of my chairs and also on a friend's chair. As long as you very carefully follow the wire routing and use really small zip ties and keep everything nice and neat, it won't affect anything on the chair. Okay, I'm working away here. Um, it's taking just about all my energy, but well, we've got the cable run down here. I'll show you that in a minute. And by the way, it's almost impossible to work anywhere near this tilt actuator without getting grease on your hands. <laughs> but we've got the wire pulled all the way down through here now and I'm fishing it through to the other side to connect to our positive and the negative is gonna attach right here. We have a little bit of extra wire. I'm fighting the urge to trim this down right now. Actually, you know what we can do? Let's just, uh, here, think. We can just run this through here, then run it back through here. Aha, there we go. All right, that pulled up our slack. And this will be underneath the cover, so that'll be fine. Yeah, so full steam ahead here. Um, I'm gonna continue working, I'll be back. Okay, I was getting ready to hook up the main fuse or, and the positive connection and I opened it up to see what amperage of fuse is in here and it was a 20 amp fuse. I would rather put like a 15 amp fuse in there because I'm not going to be pulling that much power. But when I pulled the fuse out, if you look real close in here, you can see we've got one connection right here, but then on this side, it's missing. So I think what happened with this fuse holder was, I don't know if it got warm or it was just effective or what, but when a fuse got pushed in there, that connector is now down inside this. And I can't see it. I looked around down in there with a flashlight and in the interest of making sure this has a good connection, we're gonna replace it. So I've got one of the micro ATX fuse, fuse holders here, uh, same gauge wiring. So we're gonna go ahead and splice this on here then I'll be able to put another fuse in here. So we will go ahead and slide this on here, then strip a little bit of wire off of this, and strip a little bit of wire off of this. There we go. And we're just gonna use a butt connector. And we can slide our heat shrink over this. And also, this gives me an excuse to use the Ryobi cordless heat gun. But not only that, it came with this attachment for heat shrink. It's basically just a little rampy thing. So attach that on the front here. And it's gonna blast the heat into this little chamber. And we can use this to um, shrink down our heat shrink. All right, let's try this out. The cool thing with this is, yes, it is a heat gun, but it's not nearly as hot as the ones that plug into the wall, so it's not gonna set your wiring on fire. But as you can see, it worked pretty well for heat shrinking that down. I think this thing has gotta be my new favorite tool. It was totally worth the 91 bucks or whatever it was. I mean, look at that. Look how nice that is. <laughs> Okay, we've got everything connected up down below. Got the fuse in, got the back half of the top cover back on there. You can see here, our wire comes down. I tightly followed this path all the way down here, down here and around. Loops under here, through the cable track into the back area there. So let's go ahead and, oops, not run over stuff here. Let's lower this thing down a little bit. 
make sure our wiring is good. Just to make sure that doesn't get pinched. Everything there looks fine. Let's go ahead and hit the button on this. Uh, maybe this has to be turned on first. There we go. And what does that say? Uh, oh, it looks like 12.3 volts. Okay, so that is the output of the power converter. I thought maybe that was gonna be the chair voltage, but uh, you know what? Maybe I'll replace one of these or add in another one that shows the chair voltage along with the output voltage. That might be kind of handy. All right, cool, it works, it's powered up. So now, um, gotta figure out wiring for a camera. I think I'm gonna get some food real quick and then uh, continue on with this. It's been a lot of work, but I'm happy to finally have something attached here that we can use for powering accessories and lights and other stuff like that. But anyways, I shall return. <laughs> Okay, we've got the box all hooked up and it's working now and this is the USB cable that powers the camera system that just loops out here to this connector and goes to the camera controller under there. I dug through all my stuff and I thought about potentially using the power supply that came with the camera, but this is a lot of wire and it uses this weird connector that I can't really shorten this cable with. I could kind of bunch this up in there, but I'd rather not do that. But if you remember when we installed the cameras, we got this little USB power supply thing. So what we're going to do is basically tuck this right in here. Then we can plug our USB directly into that. Okay, that should be good. And how do we want to put this thing in here? I think we'll point it the other direction. Kind of like that. Yeah, I think that should work. I'm going to use some of our magical mystery 3M mounting tape here. This stuff is no joke. It does not come off of things, even if you want it to. And I keep it inside this Tupperware because it sticks to everything. And yes, it will stick to this rubber material. <laughs> go it looks like a good spot and let's get our power connected I was pondering how I wanted to wire this this whole thing is set up right here so that the 24 volts comes directly in and goes into the power converter then from there it goes into these little bus bars and there's some little link bars behind there so this is only tw uh, this is only 12 volt now this thing is compatible with 24 volts and I was thinking it'd be nice to not have to run an extra power converter, but then I realized this thing having Volt Pro batteries in it, there are times while it's charging that this chair will get up to 31 volts. And that might be a little bit high for some of this stuff. So we're just gonna go ahead and run it with the power converter, I guess. I think it's gonna be the best way to do it for now. I was thinking originally what I might do is split off these bars on the back and make half of it 12 volt and half of it 24. But most of my accessories that are 24 volt compatible, I know will start get cranky over 30 volts. So we're just gonna have to run this thing all the time. And that'll be fine. We're not putting huge loads on this thing, so it's not gonna get super hot necessarily or do anything crazy. I don't know what the rating of this thing is. He had a 20 amp fuse in here and this looks like a pretty beefy converter. Um, I think they label them on the back, but anyways, I, I'm never gonna be pulling 20 amps out of this thing, so. Yeah, we should be fine. So let's go ahead and connect our USB cable. Oh, did I not leave enough space? Okay, just enough. There we go, that's plugged in. So let's hit our 12 volt converter and we should hear the camera system beep twice if it's working. Maybe, oh, there we go. Okay, camera system is now running and it's basically coming in from the chair, going through the 24 to 12 volt converter, and then from there into the USB converter. So there are a couple of conversion steps going on, but for right now, it'll get the job done. Oh, actually I just remembered. I wanted to set up this other switch 
for the cameras. Although, do I want to do that? Uh, trying to think. I want to put the rock lights on here. I'm trying to decide if I want to use the switch for the lights. Yeah, I think I'll use the switch for the lights. We do have another button here as well, which isn't currently hooked up. So, anyways, lots of options with this setup. Now we have these, and there is an inordinate amount of wire attached to these rock lights. They have these weird little weather pack connectors, and there's one control cable coming out of the box, and it goes into this four-way splitter. I think what I'm going to have to do... Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to get to installing these today. I need to do a bunch of work on the bench and figure out a way to make this wiring significantly shorter. Because there's like 15 feet times 4 of wiring on here. Then we've got the little control module and the power wires for that. So I think in this video we're probably going to wait and not do this right now. That's, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll save that for later. I'm gonna take this back to the bus with me though, and I'll just work on this as I have a little bit of time here and there. I think for right now though, we're good to go with this thing. Oh, I took off the USB charger and it's just dangling right here. I realized I don't really need that since I've got USBs here. So I'm gonna have to uninstall that for right now though, I put this little pouch back on here that has my keys and stuff. I did grab a couple of these little zipper dump pouches, and I think this might make a good replacement for this. This was just something I found at Goodwill, and as you can see the Velcro is kind of worn out on it. But what I want to do is make kind of a metal plate that this mounts to and goes onto the rail. We'll probably do that later on as well. But for now, I think we are ready to put the lid back on this thing and call it a thing. I'm gonna get this buttoned up the rest of the way and then I'll show you once we're done and the chair's all back together. Okay, we're all put back together. We got this lovely box here on the side and it does not stick out any further than the wheel or the armrest or anything like that. It just happens to fit right here where the side guard goes and we have access to our little USB ports here. That little zipper is kind of in the way, but we got this auxiliary power button, a couple other switches, and we got our pouch. Oh, I keep forgetting. I got to do something with that. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. It's black, so it matches the whole sort of incognito utility look of the chair and all that. And we have a bunch of different power outputs we can use for it. We can use for various things. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And it's solidly mounted. That is not going anywhere. And there we go power converter installed. It's the next day now, actually the next night. So these rock lights, I think they will be cool. They're exceptionally bright, but I was, I didn't really think about the amount of wire <laughs> that these had and the way they're set up, it's gonna take kind of some re-engineering of the wiring. So we'll worry about that later on. But yeah, ran around today. The power box on the chair seems to be working great. I can turn my cameras on and off and I can charge USB things. The nice thing with this box is it's big enough that there's plenty of room for activities in there. So we'll be able to mount the controller for the lights in there. I kind of want to put a stereo on this chair as well. So depending on the type of module I get, you, you can get these really inexpensive compact Class D amplifiers on eBay. They work pretty well. So I was looking at the security cameras. There's so much weird stuff that always goes on outside. Anyways. If all goes well tomorrow, I don't want to jinx it, but I might be getting a new van. So we'll see how that works. Well, new to me. I think it's like a 99 or 2000 or uh, some, it's basically another Ford E350, but this one does not use gasoline. So anyways, hopefully that works out. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. And I will catch you in the next one, which will probably be the live stream on Thursday, but we'll see. See ya.